Well, he had 87 caps for Wales. He had four for the Lions. He's the record try scorer for Wales. He's fourth on the all-time list. He's in the Rugby Hall of Fame. He's the most capped Welsh winger. I hope I didn't leave anything off the list. What a pleasure to have you on the platform, <laughs> Shane Williams. Uh, thank you. Very kind of you. Good to be here. Yeah, well, uh, well, you know, it's us against you lot again, my friend. Um, and I know that in Wales, this is just enormous, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, look, it's it's probably uh, the biggest international game as far as the Welsh are concerned. Um, it's been a, such a long time since we've had a victory over the All Blacks, and uh, you know every year we have the same discussions: Are, are we there? Are we thereabouts? Is this a, a good New Zealand squad? Is it a good team? Is it a good time to play them? It's never a good time to play the All Blacks, but um, yeah, you know we, we enjoy playing the All Blacks. It's a great fixture for the fans. And uh, and it's always a cracking game as well, to be honest with you. So I don't see it being any different on the weekend. Why is it always a bad time to play the All Blacks? Because <laughs> they're always pretty good. As a Welshman, um, they're always a good side. That um, you know, for me personally, obviously, I have I've never beaten them. Uh, we've come in we've come in within a point before. However, you know, whenever we've played the All Blacks, uh, we've always been up against it. We've played against some of the world's best that have ever played the game. The Richie McCaws. You know, uh, of course, the Dan Carters, etc. And uh, you know, as far, you know, in my in my era, they're the best rugby team that has been. And year in year out, um, they always seem to produce the goods. So um, it's never it's never an easy fixture for us, certainly. But the fans love it as well. The fans love the All Blacks coming to Wales. And uh, like I say, it's always a spectacle. There's always some cracking tries. Shane Williams with us. All Blacks against Wales. This is the first of three people on the Northern Hemisphere tour. Then we get Scotland. Then we get the Poms at Twickenham, of course. This particular All Black side, <clears throat> though, Shane, uh, as fans here in New Zealand, we've really struggled this year. You, you, you know the results. We're rewriting history in all the worst possible ways. Argentina at home, Ireland at home, and Irish series at home. You know, if if you if you wrote all that down and you didn't know much about the game, and then you looked at the fact that Wales haven't won since 1953, it'd probably be natural for you to say, "Hey, well, this is probably your best chance in a long time." Is that fair? <laughs> I, I think it's very fair. Um, you know, we've we've always been up against it, and um, you know, whenever we played, we've always come in as the underdogs, and I'm sure we will this time. But you know, uh, having seen um, the results uh, in New Zealand, obviously. In my time again, um, New Zealand haven't lost uh, that often at home, and you know we also saw the success of the Irish tour, which you know everyone wrote off the Irish before going there. We saw what Argentina did, um, and in fact, you know it, it, it was a tough game last week against Japan also. Yep, so yep. you know, as, as far as we're concerned, um, probably not the best form the All Blacks have, have been in coming into um, uh, into an autumn series. However. You know, we all know as Welshmen that uh, on the day the All Blacks are world beaters. You know, they won the championship as well, um, despite probably not playing their best rugby. And I think that sums the All Blacks up. And you know, when I do look at the at the team and some of the players on the field, for me personally, especially looking at that back line, um, you know, that would that would put the frighteners up any world team. So, look, it's it, it's a you know, as far as the Welsh are concerned, it's it's a great time to play the All Blacks. It's the first one up. You know, we're going to have a big crowd. The Welsh are really looking forward to it. It's at Cardiff, great stadium. The atmosphere is going to be fantastic. But we still know as Welshmen, this is going to be very, very tough and we'll still be the underdogs. But, we, you know, we, we always give our best and I think that's why it's going to be a great game. Uh, Shane, give us the state of your team at the moment. We hear that you've got a lot of injuries. Uh, how, how, how bad is that toll on your team? Yeah, well, we've, we've you know, we've probably got our... Um, I went, I was first starting uh, outside half in Dan Bigger out, um, which is a concern because Gareth Anscombe has played very little rugby. Um, you know, we've we've had to draft Reese Priestland in as well, who's who's having a great season uh, for Cardiff, but is 35. Um, so you know that that would be a concern, I suppose. Uh, we've had players like Justin Tipperick that have been injured for a long time, uh, Ken Owens as well that have managed to be able to come back and get fit for. For the autumn series, um, but it's you know it's, it should never be an excuse. You should always have strength in depth. You should always have players coming through the system that uh, are international ready. And you know, as as Welsh as Welshmen and as Welsh people, we the autumn series for uh, series for us is to have a look at new blood coming through and uh, and mix and match and, and make the best of uh, of the players that you have around you. So 
yeah, we've had injuries and, and it's been tough and we've got key players out, but you know, it's not an excuse. We've still, we've still got enough, I, I, I feel, within the squad that can do well in this autumn series. Shane Williams is with us, all-time leading try scorer for Wales, 97 caps for Wales against the All Blacks, of course. It is in the wee small hours, Sunday morning, our time. So, you know, we go into that Japan test and a lot of excuses are made, Shane, that, oh, we haven't played for five weeks. And, I mean, that's down to us. I mean, we could have had our players play an NPC. But you guys haven't played as well. How long is it since these players have played a game that you'd consider to be at this kind of level? Oh, well, you're talking uh, talking summer tour, really. Yeah, um, yeah. We had a rel- relatively successful summer tour in South Africa. You, did. you know, yep. we won, won, lost and drew one, which for us, you know, has, has never happened before in, in South African soil. So, you know, we, we're very positive after that. Obviously, um, that was the last of the internationals. Um, players have been back at their regions and their clubs and they've been playing, um, you know, on a weekly basis or every other weekly basis. So you know, the players will be relatively um, ready for this game. But we all know international rugby is a step up again. Uh, fitness, um, you know, mentally and physically as well. So we, we certainly don't have any excuses. And I, and, and I wouldn't like to think that we, we, we would want to use any. You know, we, we know that these players are going to have to be on, the, on top of their game. They're going to have to be fit. They're going to have to be ready. And they're going to have to be mentally prepared as well. Um, we, like I said earlier, we do have players that probably haven't played that much rugby due to injuries. But... At the same time, these are our experienced key players that, you know, I think we've done whatever it's what is, has been needed to make sure that they're fit for the, for the especially this game, because uh, you need your experience for these big matches. Shane, you know yourself personally when you go in, when you go to play the All Blacks, you know, in the days beforehand, you know, the moments that you spend by yourself in that changing room, the whole build up when you have got the team around you. W- w- just talk us back some of the things that you, that you personally went through to get yourself up and ready for this game. Well, well, personally, you know, um, for me, I knew I was playing the best in the world, um, you know, and, and I would I would put the All Blacks in my rugby era, the best in the world, um, definitely. You know, I, I would always look at the players I was matched up against, Rico Gia, um, you know, the likes of Joe Roca Coco, uh, Dougie Howlett, and I and I soon had to realise that Sivivatu, I knew that if I, if I wasn't up and ready for this game and prepared mentally and physically... I would get run off the park by these players. So, you know, for me personally, I always felt that I played some of my best rugby against the All Blacks because if I wasn't up to, you know, above 96, 97%, I would get found out very, very quickly because, you know, they, they, they were the best team in the world at, at transporting that ball all around the field. You know, we, we all know that, uh, you know, the, the tries that... Uh, all Blacks wingers have scored over the years. The amount of tries that you know, the Jonah Lomo's got, Will Jordan now as well, and uh, Seville Reese and these players that are just scoring tries for fun, and that's always been the All Blacks way. So I knew personally that if I wasn't mentally and physically ready for this game, it was going to be very, very tough. And I'd like to think it was the same for every other player within that squad. That if you switched off for a second, um, you you know you you were made to, you were made to be uh, you were punished by the team. And if you weren't ready, then you were going to get an eye in on the field. And, and it was as simple as that against the All Blacks. It really was. In those final moments in the dressing room by yourselves and that, do you speak Welsh? Does, I mean, what does somebody do to rev you up? Is there a speech somebody gives? Did, <laughs> did, uh, did uh, you say some words? Do you sing? Or what, you know, what happens? Yeah, well, what was funny in my, in my era, yeah, a lot of players do speak Welsh to each other. Um, I don't know whether it's, it's get each other, you know, get each other up or if it's just... You know, that's just the language a lot of the players spoke at the time. But the funny, the funny thing was against the All Blacks for me, um, whenever I played the All Blacks, a uh, majority of the time, we had Kiwi coaches. Right. That, um, you, know, the, you know, the likes of Steve Hansen, Graham Brian Henry, Henry. Yep. Of, uh, you know, Warren Gatland. Um, pl- um, coaches and obviously past players that knew the, the New Zealand mentality, knew their attitude, knew what was going through their heads prior to these games. And we kind of had the insight of, you know, from Warren Gatlin telling us, look, this is how we need to prepare for this game. This is what the All Blacks are going to be doing. And this is what we need to do. You know, when we face the hacker, we, we make sure that we give it the respect it deserves. We, we link arms, we link a chain, and we show them that we're here to play. And little things like that that kind of got us in the mindset um, of, of New Zealand and the players that we were facing. 
you know, it obviously obviously it, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> we, it, it worked. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it didn't work yeah, because yeah. you know we we never beat them in 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 my term. But look, it, it, we we just knew that whenever we played the All Blacks and and uh, and some of the teams, some of the best that have ever played the game, as far as I'm concerned, that if we weren't at our best, it was going to be a very very long day at the office. And we always knew we were underdogs. We always knew that. We were up against it, but you know we, we we were a proud bunch, and at home we felt that was our best opportunity. And there were some games, you know, where we did push the odds close, I know. but yeah. there, there were there were also times where we, you know, it, it, it was a bit of a hammering out there as well. But look, they're the, they're the best team in the world, and they consistently have been for a long, long time. Finally then, and I know that, you know, football's big in the valleys too, and you qualified for the Football World Cup, the FIFA World Cup, since the first time, I think, in 58, and that's absolutely massive. But what would a win over the All Blacks do? How big would that be, and would it be bigger and better than a World Cup rugby win? <laughs> um, oh, look, I, th- I think, you know, I think as a Welshman, we take every game as it comes, you know. Um, we've got to realise that, you know, in the Six Nations, our last game was against Italy, and we lost. Um, and there was all it was all doom and gloom in Wales, and we were the worst team in history. We go on a summer tour to South Africa, we, we're well and truly written off, um, we come home from that tour with our he- heads held high. So we take, as well as we, we take every game as it comes. So uh, a, a victory against the All Blacks on Saturday will be massive for Welsh rugby. Historically, you know, I think it was in, in, in 1950, uh, it's been 50 years, sorry, since um, since we've had a victory of the All Blacks. And that says it all to begin with. But for these players, if they can grab a victory against the All Blacks, you know, the, the rest of the, this autumn series is, is going to be a far, far easier campaign. And it put, it'll put us in fantastic stead for Six Nations and, of course, a World Cup around the corner. So, yeah, this, this victory on Saturday would be massive and it'll be the biggest victory in, in Wales' history in a very, very long time.